Now that we have five or six segments, what we're going to do before uh, the end of the night is target. So, uh, so when we develop the strategy, we start with the core product or the technology. Uh, we segment, come up with five or six uh, segments, and then we target to choose one, to choose one target market. Then we do the positioning, then we do the whole product, then we do all the other things. So, uh, the last class, oh so long ago, 10 minutes ago, uh, we ended with this. We had the value prop matrix, where we had five uses and five users. Potential. Um, so we need to choose one. Which one of these are we going to uh, go and serve as a startup company? So what is targeting? Targeting is the process of evaluation and prioritization of the market <coughs> segments that we already looked at in terms of attractiveness to the company and in terms of the company's ability to serve that market. So the ultimate question is, can we win? Can we capture value? So segmentation was about creating value which customers are going to want this product? Which customers are going to benefit from this product? Yes? Which customers can I create value for? The targeting exercise <coughs> is where can I capture value and win in terms of market? Okay? Again, we have a five-step process and we'll go through all of them. One, first one is develop your targeting factors. Meaning, targeting factors are objective criteria, objective criteria, and a priori. Meaning, you decide what you want before going, right? You decide what type of market you can serve before you make the decision. You don't make the decision and then you justify it. That's not targeting. Money. What? That's money. That is losing money. Okay? So it's an objective set of criteria by which you can measure the attractiveness of a market and the strengths of your company to deliver. Okay? So these are examples, okay, of uh, targeting factors. You can say, look, I will only go after a market uh, where I can make $100 million. I can only go after a market that is in America or in Germany or in the Middle East. So this is a way in which you can start uh, targeting, okay? Um, you know, I only wanna go after markets that, generally speaking, are early adopters of technology, okay? Of other technologies, not necessarily about this technology, okay? Um, and so on, you know, it, it, is there a profitability potential in this market? And if so, can I make you know, they, in my Cisco days, um, the, the basically, we could make any margin on our routers as we wanted, as long as it was 60% margin. Okay? That was basically the order from uh, Mortgage, from the then CEO. You can make any margin you want as long as it's 60%. Now it's 80%, by the way. Okay? 
So, you know, can you achieve 60% or 50% or whatever profitability potential you want? Okay, so these are different criteria that you want to have to select your potential market. Okay? Uh, so this is an example, even for a large company, this is an example of, well, not large. Genentech was not quite large at the time, but these are their criteria for drug development. Five criteria, uh, you know, scientific confidence, critical medical need, in which in their case at the time it was oncology, uh, significant market opportunity. At the time, it meant $400 million, uh, patentable stuff, and so on and so forth. So these are five criteria by which they would choose uh, new products, for instance. Does that make sense? You had a question? Okay. Uh, Cisco. Cisco, a few years back, uh, decided to find the next billion dollar business. And these were the five things that they were looking for. Does it address a real pain point? Will it appeal to a big enough market, which in their case is a billion dollar market, right? Is it timing now? Uh, and so on, right? So even big companies uh, do something like this. Number two, decide uh, what weight each targeting factor is going to have. So sure, you want the 50% gross margin, but how does that stack up against the billion dollar size, against the, you know, we want to go into markets that uh, have basically tech adoption practices and so on, right? Of course, all of these have to add up to 100%, right? You can't add up to more than that. So how do, do the different factors stack up against each other? So here's where you have to decide what is important to you. Now, you can also have binary. Yes, no. Not just, you know, basically things that add up to 100, but things that say, you know what, is the, totally the, the total available market greater than 100? Yes, then we can continue. No, don't even bother. Uh, does the company use SAP R3? Yes, then let's do it. Otherwise, don't even bother. And so on, right? Does the market have a clear leader? Yes or no? If yes, don't bother. So, so these are binary choices. And then when you get through all the binary choices, then you assign a weight to all of the above targeting factors. Does that make sense? You do that before you make a decision, okay? Uh, and then you decide, uh, you develop a rating system. So you develop a rating system. 1 to 10, 1 to 5, 1 to 20, I don't care. Okay, A to F, I don't care, right? But you develop an easy to understand rating system. Uh, I use 1 to 10 or 1 to 5. Uh, and the sample is a 10 is a slam dunk. Uh, I mean, a, a 10 is a no-brainer. And, you know, these are few and far between. So be careful how you assign the tens. Five means we're okay if we enter this market. Uh, and one means we're gonna so lose our shirt in this market. Don't even think about it. Does that make sense? So develop a rating system, have a multifunctional team led by marketing. Why marketing? I see a lot of frowning people. Because supposedly, the folks who are close to the customers, 
the folks who know the pain and feel the pain are the folks who have to lead this, uh, this team. But it's not just one person. It's got to be a team. You've got to have finance. You've got to have sales. You have to have engineering. Okay? Um, and this is important. You may want to have an outsider in this process to avoid groupthink. There is a place and a time for groupthink. This is not it. Okay? This is not it. Do you know what groupthink is? I mean, do I need to describe it? When people don't want to hurt others, they want to be nice, and they don't want to say, look, I think this is not such a no-brainer. I think we're going to lose our shirt. In a groupthink situation, people are afraid to do that because they're afraid to lose their job. They're afraid to, you know, blah, 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 right? So if you're doing all this analysis by yourself, it really just comes down to, like, how you have to be honest and how honest are you with yourself? Exactly. It all comes down to being honest with yourself. This is not an exercise to, again, justify your previous assumption. This is a, ex an exercise where you have to be, in the words of Jim Collins, brutally honest, Okay. Because guess what? You're going to find out now or you're going to find out later when you've spent the, mil the, the million or $10 million, right? Uh, so you better find early. So step number four is develop the targeting matrix. So for each application and each use, develop one of these. All right? I mean, for each application and each user, you have these target bases. You assign the weight, 20%, 50%, 10%, 30%. And then you assign the rating. Do we have a channel or can we develop a channel to the office building operation managers? on a one to 10 basis. Can we develop a channel to the data center operations managers segment on a one to 10 basis? See what this says for each one of them. Can we develop the whole product for the suburban car owner on a one to 10 basis, eight? Can we develop it for the coal plant operations managers? For each and every targeting factor and each and every uh, application and user, you do this. Again, it's a lot of work. Be honest, brutally honest now. Okay? Or forever hold your peace. Or until you spend another 10 million. And then bring it all together. So... Now we have a matrix with segments, with applications or uses of that technology. Uh, but instead, remember this from the segmentation exercise. We had value props. And now what do we have? Numbers. So the value prop was an initial uh, more or less calculation on what you would bring to that market. And this is a calculation of which one would be attractive to you. Segmentation, value creation. Targeting, value capture. Okay? And on a 1 to 10 basis, here you decide which products which applications to develop, and which market segments to develop. Does this make sense? Now, anything that's a five or six, don't even bother, okay? If you're not gonna bring significant uh, possibility of winning, don't even bother. And you know why? Because it's going to be even more difficult to go to market than you think. 
So if in this uh, exercise, if at this point you think it's going to be a seven, in reality, it's going to be a six or a five. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. So I think it was Eisenhower who used to say that uh, no one survives, no plan survives uh, contact with the enemy. Right? And the same thing can be said about launching a product. It's going to be even more difficult than you think. So anything below six or seven, don't even bother. Uh, and uh, it turns out that these are about nine or so. And you decide, you know what? These look good. It's going to be one of these two markets, either data center operations or coal plant operations. And the applications are going to be either convert the exhaust waste heat to power or the hot water to power or the metal heat to power. So we went from the world to six market segments and a number of possibilities of products to two market segments and three product possibilities. That is why we do segmentation and targeting. So at this point, what do we do? Go back to the customer. So at this point, you can basically say all, everything, except for these six, uh, or whatever you decide, uh, these six cells, I'm going to ignore. So I'm going to go back and develop if you had technology 1.0, then develop technology 1.2 for basically these three things and these two markets. And go back and back and back until you have it right. Does that make sense? Until you have one application for one user. And that's the targeting exercise. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you may find that those three potential users have the same need and the same pain and they need the same product. It's very unusual. Okay? Now, if this exercise says that, then hmm, that looks interesting. But by and large, that will not be the case, right? Uh, and the other reason you can't spread out yourself is that there's going to be 20 companies going exclusively after every single one of those market segments. And if anyone is arrogant enough to think you can go after three markets, right? And when? If 20 companies are going after each one of them, you know, I don't know. Um, does that make sense? <coughs> yes. Yes. Have these enormous user bases in the hundreds of millions. Yes. Like a Facebook or something like that. What is their market segment? <clears throat> Facebook. So Facebook started with college, right? Not even college. They started with one market segment, Harvard students. Then they expanded to Ivy Leagues. Ivy Leagues. And then they expanded to other universities. And then they expanded to high schools, and that did not work. And then they expanded to everybody, right? So see how they did it? They went after one market. Now, I'm not telling you they actually decided to do this. That's the way it worked out. But in hindsight, that was the right way to do it. Does that make sense? One more question. Yes? So, what about the size of the market? Great question. I'm going to cover it right now. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Um, I love these great, you know, segue questions. Um, oh, here it is, the quote, no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy. Um, so, what about the market size? And the thing is, especially if it's an emerging market and there's no market. 
what is the size of a non-existing market? All right, let's talk about it. Um, again, most people use a top-down uh, way to approach to size the market. The healthcare market is a trillion, $1.7 trillion. If we conservatively win 1% of that, we're a $17 billion company. First year, second year, right? I'm telling you, investors hear this about 10 times every day, okay? If we win 1% of that market, we're a $17 billion company. Now, why do entrepreneurs do this? Because, A, they believe that investors want to see a multi-billion dollar market. And it's true, right? But also, B, they see large company executives doing this. You know, 957 million phones, 1% of that. We're going to do 10 million phones in 2008. Steve Jobs, right? This is before they came up with, you know, iPhone, right? Why not? If it's good enough for Steve Jobs, it's good enough for me, right? These are multi-billion dollar companies already. Now, and this, this is not bad to sell an idea by the way, but this is useless to develop a product, okay? Um, so it, it may help you summarize, blah, 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 but if you wanna develop a product strategy, it is worse than useless. How do you do it? You use something called Total Available Market, or TAM, okay? What is a TAM? A TAM, actually there are th three variations and they're all fine. You can use any combination of these. One is, uh, what is the total number of potential customers in your target market? Now, remember I said every segment has to be measurable? Well, that's the number, okay? What is the potential number of users? Another way to do the TAM is, what is the total potentially number of units sold into the market. Assuming that, you know, users are going to buy more than one unit, then what is that potential uh, TAM? And the one that's used the most is what is the total dollar revenue number from uh, the above potential market. Now, let's do that number. Now, but this is a big reminder, big caveat. TAM is not your market, it's the total pie that everyone, all your competitors, you and all your competitors are going after. It's not your market, okay? Every, anybody who says that's my market is flunked hereby. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, it's a total pie. So, TAM number one, the number of potential users, let's go after the Nile independent truck drivers. 300,000 independent truck drivers in the US. This is an actual number, okay? Or close to actual. 300,000 independent truck drivers in America. Now, here's another concept. It's average revenue per user, uh, ARPU. So average revenue per user is the product plus service revenue uh, that you can get per user. Now, you need to break down to do this, the potential revenue into, if you are gonna make money from advertising or from unit sales, from service, from finan financial, uh, you know, whatever, uh, points or whatever, right? So you, know, you have to break it up. You add it all up and that's the ARPU, okay? So in this example, uh, if we're going to do the tailpipe 
exhaust to power product, say the retail price is 1500 to 2500 depending on the size of the truck. So the average is 2000 The services, I don't know, GPS location or the uh, iPod app or whatever, is going to be 100 to 500 Insurance. So basically, the ARPU is going to be 2300 Does that make sense? Average revenue per user. OK, let's put it all together. So the product is the tailpipe exhaust to power. That's going to go into trucks. Target market, independent truck drivers in America. What's the TAM? ARPU is 2,300. There are 300,000 potential users. Multiply those numbers. 300,000 times 2,300 is, if I did my numbers right, $690 million potential market. Notice that market does not exist. Okay? It may be an emerging market. It may be a non-existent market. But this is the way to size the market. Total available market. 